What is your two-step framework for rethinking the presidentialism versus parliamentarianism debate? So I think most people, when they think about presidentialism versus parliamentarism, they simply look at the institutional differences, and then they look at certain outcomes, whether democracy has succeeded or has, has failed. And then usually, statistically, they try and see whether there's a correlation between the institutional differences and the different outcomes. We say, well, that's fine, but that correlation isn't causation. So we want to look at the causal mechanisms that lead, perhaps, to institutional differences and their effect on outcomes. So the first step is to look at whether the institutions do create certain behavioural differences in the way in which people act. And then the second step will be, well, do those behavioural differences then lead to the outcomes that we are sort of interested in? So we try and split that correlation up into, a, into two steps to, to identify the causal relations. How might institutions generate psychological effects? So institutions uh, come in all shapes and sizes, and there are all sorts of different institutions. Um, but I think at heart, at bottom, institutions um, have, the percent, have, have the potential to affect the way in which we behave because they give us incentives. They give us, they give us incentives to behave in particular ways. They can encourage us to do certain things by rewarding us if we do certain things. They can also discourage us from doing certain things by punishing us or penalizing us from doing certain things. And those, uh, the ways in which they can do that are by, uh, in terms of votes, or it can be in terms of power, or it can be in terms of other sorts of policy outcomes that we consider to be important. Um, but I think the logic of institutions is that they are affecting our behavior. I mean, unless you simply discount institutions and think that they don't matter at all, the reason why, if you do think institutions are important, it's because they're affecting our behavior. And they do that by giving us incentives to behave in certain ways. What laboratory-based differences did you find between the presidential and parliamentary systems? So the main uh, uh, finding was that um, when uh, part, when presidentialism was combined with a multi-party system and a strong presidency, then there was more likely to be conflict between the president, the executive, and the legislature um, than under parliamentarism when there was a multi-party system and a strong leader. So uh, what that suggests is uh, that under, under, only under particular conditions, so it's not a, a conclusion that applies to presidentialism generally or to parliamentarism generally, but under certain conditions, uh, a very particular condition, but one that had been signalled in the literature for quite a long time, namely this multi-party system with a strong president, then there was more likelihood of conflict um, than under parliamentarism.